This video contains butchery of an animal, so if you're not into that sort of thing, don't watch it. What's up, my dudes? Um, we are just out to stalk a stag. <laughs> because they're yeah. causing chaos. You got the the hinds went out of season on April the 1st after some stagna, because they seem to be the ones that are smashing everything up. Trees and things like that. About now. Eating the cauliflower, so let's go get one. So we just pulled up and it's a really lovely evening. Beautiful sunset. Um, got the snacks, got the tea. We're gonna go sit up in an old high seat. Um, so we can see right over the area that the bird, well, that the snacks are in. Hey guys, hope you're all well. I'm just doing a video this morning um, about butchery. Um, a lot of you wanted to see it from the last video. Basically, I'm not a professional butcher, um, so don't expect professional cuts, professional butchery skills. I'm very much a man of the fact, very amateur, and I'll do it to best, the best way I see fit um, to try and get the best cuts of meat off the animal. Um, a lot of people might think, oh no, you've wasted this, this and this, but frankly, you know, when you're shooting quite a few deer, like I do, um, I normally would sell them to the game dealer um, if I've already got a freezer full, which I do at the moment, but obviously we're in strange times, so the game dealers aren't collecting, which I think is very odd. Um, uh, you'd think that food production would be the height of everybody's mind at the moment, but obviously they are selfishly looking to their own interests. And obviously the restaurants aren't, aren't, aren't open, so that's their main customer, so they won't, they won't collect from the stalkers, and therefore, waste tons of meat that basically could be going to the, to, to the British public. So I'm doing my bit and, um, and, and doing bag drops of venison to, to, to local people um, and tra little trades here and there as well. So yeah, basically it's a butchery video, a bit of a rant as well about the, about the, about the game dealers not collecting, but let me know what you think in the comments about that because um, I personally think it's a bit of a waste um, for what could be a lot of good meat coming forwards, but I suppose best interest in there are their own heart, but I don't know. Um, but anyway, let me know what you think in the comments about the butchery. It's not going to be not going to be grade A salt based skills, but um, I'll give them my best best my best shot, and I'll, I'll show you the cuts that I like to personally take. And um, you know, depending on the shot down is my old fridge that I use for the hanging of the deer. There's the rope, as you can see, and um, I'm going to take it home and show you a bit of butchery. So yeah, as you can see. Three important things I like to use when butchering is obviously Ziploc bags. They are really, really useful because you can just bung the um, the meat straight in there and into the freezer or fridge or whatever if you're going to give it away. They're very easy and hygienic. So chopping board, just use a box down and one. I'm using that one. And then obviously a knife um, to cut up the animal. It's not actually a knife I'm using. I use my one of my hunting knives as the sharpest ones I've got, but it's just a kitchen knife. I thought I'd just put it in there for... Definitely bring this, and once you cut the meat off the animal, you stick it on there, butcher it there, and then put it straight in, or take it back to the kitchen, or however you, however you want to do it. I actually hang the animal and cut the meat off the animal from there, but we'll um, we'll go and check it out now. As I said, shot a roebuck last week in the um, second day of the season, and it's basically, it was a shoulder shot, it's just a high, a high shoulder shot, so to be honest, you probably lost quite a lot of this, this meat down here. So I'm actually gonna to concentrate today on upper meats, um, which is what I tend to do to start off with, is just cut the actual animal in half, basically around the top of the, the top end of the back, back straps. So you're not really losing any back strap, I mean, you're losing a little bit at the top, but you're making it a more manageable task if you've got a much more, so shuffle. Cut all the way around the spine. And then normally, break some 
around that should just twist off like so and then just cut away any remaining skin so we then got two pieces of the animal obviously a lot of meat in this back powerful hind quarters of the robot a robot so what it's going to do just depending on how you want to eat it cut it in half again and you can basically have two complete roast joints so you can you can literally just skin it and have them as have them as that or you can cut away the meat and have them as have them as steaks or a boneless a boneless roast but like i said i like to having a sharp knife always helps because it just goes through bone like butter I tend to hang it and just skin it off like that or you can depending on how you want to prepare it you can but obviously you want the skin off um, now I'm no great master at skinning so we'll fast forward to when this skinning is done what we're left with here is basically a bit of hair on it but that's always going to be the case when you're home butchering um, it's two back legs I lost a bit of meat when I was taking the backbone out of it as you can probably see but I normally debone a shirt for carcass um, but it just happens to be the way that it so it's relatively deboned, you've got a decent bit of meat which goes all the way down through there, along the bone and through. So you can cut that off if you want to, which I'll show you for one. Just follow the bone down. So that's a lump of meat there, you can use steaks or, you know, um, cube it or whatever you want to do with it. And there's a bit some more on there, so the front muscle as well, do the same with. So this is just following either side of the bone down, got some more there, again you can use for a steak or, or cubing. And there's just little strips on the waist, which is that, a solid. A lot of, you get a lot of sinew in meat in venison as well. So. If you're thinking about mincing it or burgering it or whatever, just bear in mind that the, um, the meat, the sinew inside the meat, so this sort of white stuff, will clog up that if you've got a kitchen mincer. It just won't, it will do it for seconds and then clog and burn out. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna do any real kind of butchering, then you see that's, just, see that's all sinew in there, so there's not much point in taking any of that. See, it's all got that muscle fibers running through it. You can eat it, but there's not really any point. And that's basically what the bone would look like after you finish it with the roast. And obviously all that meat would be roast for the table. But just slightly better than me, I'm sure you could get more. But um, that's one done. Now this one I'm probably going to do the same with. Just because we've got a few of the roast joints already. If you want to get rid of some of the hair, then just run the knife along them. Just want to shave them. And as you can see, picks all the hair and the excess crap off. And then just do the same with this, starting at the tendon, coming down. See, this one's well hung, so it's actually coming off of me, falling off the bone, basically. There we are, so I lump there. Another one cubing, and the same in the front. Another good one there. Any bits you're not sure that you not don't quite like the look of, feel free to just cut them off. Um, because they will you can either chuck them now or chuck them when you get to the kitchen, dice it up, or your butcher's table. And that is two legs of venison done. And now the back straps, like I said, I'm not going to bother with the rest of the carcass because the bullet threw away expanding around did quite a lot of damage to the actual top of the um, animal itself it's a long shot so um yeah but we'll crack on with the back straps now so what we've got here is obviously the top of the animal so you can see the bullet damage is quite extensive on both sides um so probably a bit of meat in there but you know if the, if, the, if, the, if you've got a head shot or you've got a neck shot then by all means go for the shoulders uh, or the ribs i mean a lot of people will take the whole exact every single scrap of meat but you know when if, I, if i've got a red in the freezer then or in ready to go to butcher, then chances are you're gonna get a lot more meat out of one leg of a red than you would out of basically the entire body of a row. Um, so now I'll just show you what I'll do with the back straps again. Skin down the back here, and basically you wanna, in a way, peel the back 
So you've got the two back straps which run parallel to the, the spine either side and they're basically the fillet and that's, that's some of the best part of the animal. Just taking off the, the fur and the skin off the back. At this time of year, as you can see they're molting, so the hair just falls out. Basically a transfer between their winter and summer coats and it's, it does make a bit of a mess, but like I said, just running the knife down in a shaving motion actually does move, remove a lot of the fur and then you can do the rest when you come back to butchering it. But getting to the meat itself, with the back strap, start right at the top where the shoulder starts and just use the spine as a guide and you want to come all the way up the back around the end of this last one and then coming from the side ensuring to get all the meat a lot of it you see the difference that's the flank and then this is the fillet you see the difference as it comes through don't rush always angle the knife down against the ribs so you get the maximum amount of meat you can see there's a bit of flank lifting up with it there but that print predominantly is the spillet coming away from the flank so that's flank which you can eat a lot of people do eat with with the ribs or you can keep this on have it have it on top of the rib but i like to take it off it's much much cleaner and easier much more appetizing so i'll do the same on the other side you feel it going quite deep at the top and then just right over the top of the each rib with the point of the knife until you get to the bottom and then just the reverse it's going to be worse now ensuring to get all the meat along angle the knife down so if i should have a bit of a nightmare there already Flank starting to lift. You can see, just cut around that and just finish the top. And it should just pop out because it's well hung. That's when I hang an animal. I, like, I normally like to hang a small animal like this for four to five days. And a red, you probably want to hang for five to five days to seven days, basically a week. Um, and that will give you, first, if you try and butcher an animal straight away, it won't be the best in terms of, it will just basically be like eating quite tough meat. Whereas this gives it a chance, the game, the game tends to come in, the, the bacteria to break the animal down slightly. That's what a hanging an animal does. So it gives you that more sort of tender taste, and especially with venison, it gives you some of the most tender meat going. I will just show you a bit more. Here's the shot damage, you've lost a lot of meat there. That's the exit wound. The entry wound is here. And to be honest with you, this is probably salvageable, but for the sake of the video and the fact that I've got a rampaging fox that needs, it's after my chickens at the moment, which are newly hatched. Um, and this will be bait, um, which is great bait, basically. Don't put anyone near, but anyone that's gonna wind them up, if you've got a permission, or you know, you've got a permission from a farmer or you've got your own land, all the owners know that you're chucking rib cages and bits of animal out in the, Great bait for foxes, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, I'm not a master butcher, but um, get the job done. Got a decent pile of meat over there. And, um, you know, with a different shot, you could obviously take more of the front of the animal, but I've cleared the entire back of the animal out. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Any comments, feel free to, to roast my butchery skills below and um, look forward to seeing your videos coming soon. Like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy my channel.